Welcome to a very, very, very special edition of Horror Culture TV. A huge, huge, huge shout out to Mr. Todd Sheets. And as you can tell by the description, you know where we're going with this. Um, Todd Sheets actually reached out on a uh, review that I did for one of his films and uh, pretty much said if I could get in contact with them and he wanted he had something special he wanted to show me and boy did he not disappoint boy did he not disappoint man I was able to get in contact with them and he said that if I would be willing to review a film that he had made that he's kind of keeping it on the low for now and I was like fuck yeah the fuck you think I'm gonna do say no to that shit shit you got me fucked up now jokes aside I'm honored man I'm honored and I'm pleased and uh, before I get into this review uh, I just want to say that this is going to be a completely unbiased review. Not just because he sent me the link. I'm going to fake or give a review that's not real, un ungenuine. You know, all my reviews are, are genuine. I always say exactly what I feel. So here we go. Um, the name of the film is called Final Caller. Uh, pretty much... You know what? I hardly ever do this, but I did take some notes because I wanted to remind remind myself on some uh, some keynotes here and there. So I'm just gonna kind of go through them and uh, make sure I don't forget anything. So if you see me looking down, I apologize. It's just me kind of going through the notes. Like I said, um, so pretty much the setting. I'm gonna start with the setting. It's pretty much uh, predominantly a, a one setting film. It's all pretty much set in a radio station office building, and uh, it doesn't really leave from there man there's a couple of scenes where they kind of like going through the streets and stuff like that but you know pre pretty much it just stays stays uh located in that one particular setting the uh radio building radio station building so that's pretty cool that's pretty cool uh that's pretty cool because especially with micro budget films you know you got to save on 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 money obviously you know work with what you got and i've seen a couple of films man where they've been able to pull it off and they have some pretty good films out there, man. Just pretty much all in one location, and they do a hell of a job with it. So, like I said, the film was named uh, Last oh, Final Call. I'm sorry. My apologies, Mr. Sheets. Please don't murder me on your next film. Um, Final Caller. Um, the name of the radio, the radio program is called On Through the Night. So, long story short, it is one hell of a night. When they go on through the night. Just like that. So pretty much what you got. Um, you got the radio host. Named uh, Roland Bennett. Um, who's having a really fucked up day man. He's uh, He's got personal issues. And he's on the brink of a fucking divorce. And his day is about to get worse. When he sits down. And uh, like I said he has issues with a couple of people there. And uh, all of a sudden he starts getting phone calls from some weird ass fucking phone calls right and then that's just when shit starts to fucking spiral out of control and this goes fucking haywire it goes fucking haywire and that's pretty much the only thing i'm going to touch on that um on the plot i don't like to give things away you gotta wait for it so you can be able to watch it and enjoy it yourself um but yeah like i said um he starts getting these weird phone calls and at first, he takes it like, ah, these dudes are just fucking with me. Uh, I will say his attitudes, you can kind of get the idea, is that he thinks everybody's a fucking asshole. And he treats them as such, like whenever they're on the fucking phone with them. So when he gets these weird phone calls, he pretty much treats, treats them the same. Like, you're just a fucking asshole, you're here to fuck with me, and whatever, you know? Hangs up, so forth. It was this thing starts to get a, get a little crazy from there. Um, one of the things that I really, really did enjoy, man... Um, in this film I enjoyed a lot of things right but one of the things that really caught my attention was the dialogue the dialogue was actually written pretty good um, especially for an independent film I know I, you probably heard it on some of my other videos whenever I say that whenever you watch an independent film you might be getting some bad dialogue some bad acting and so forth but with this one you could tell he kind of took uh, Mr. Sheets it's written and directed by Tom she Todd Sheets written directed and edited by Todd Sheets you know um you could tell he actually sat down and wrote it 
probably rewrote it a few times and like just trying to get it right and you could fucking tell man that the dialogue was pretty was pretty spot on now don't get me wrong i mean you're not gonna get no dialogue like if you're watching the movie seven silence of the lambs top notch shit like that you know what i'm saying and i'm not putting this one down i'm just saying this is a it has really good dialogue for an independent film especially for the for like a micro budget something like this you could tell he has this passion in there for it you know um and it's great it's great to see that the other thing that also caught my attention was a lot of the camera work um a lot of the camera work especially like there's scenes in there like whenever he's outside uh or they're outside like i said they had like some scenes from like the streets and buildings and shit like that those are okay but i think if i'm not mistaken i think those were actually like from a, like one of those websites where you can actually like buy scenes and kind of add them in there i'm not too sure if that's the case or not but that's just kind of what it felt like right but the actual scenes when you can tell he's actually recording because he's recording the actors and stuff like that. Um, they're shot pretty well. They're shot pretty well. You could tell he was playing with different ideas, different camera angles, uh, the camera work in, in general, like following the people around. There is one scene that kind of, it was kind of reminiscent to like the Evil Dead kind of feel. Uh, it's not giving anything away, but it's like they're running through the hallways and, the, and then it's kind of like a POV shot, but it's like fast forward. So like fast camera angles like that you know what i'm saying and it, it kind of gave me like that feel from uh from uh, evil dead so that was pretty cool to watch in there uh there's other angles like i said like where they're following somebody and it's like a bottom shot kind of like looking up and it makes you feel some sort of way when you're watching it look that, that was pretty that's pretty good man um i don't know a lot about film except that i love films and that I would like to be a director one day. So I kind of study films whenever I get a, sh a chance. I've always tried to notice different things like in movies, you know, even Hollywood movies and shit like that. So when I start seeing stuff like this in independent films, where it's not just like a put the put the camera here, take this shot. All right, we got it. Now next move it here, and it's all standstill. Nah, when it's inventive like that, or, or you know, they're trying to play around with, with with things like that. It's cool to see, man. And like I said, it's a huge shout out. It it really evoked a lot of a. Uh, I, I would say, yeah, it evoked a lot of emotions, man. Like, it, you, you kind of feel, you kind of felt, like, the some of the camera angles, like I said, like, that. there was one particular angle where somebody's, like, looking through a window, right? And, and the angle that it gave, at least to me, was, like, felt kind of predatory as far as, like, the kind of, like, a POV shot, kind of, like, going up through the stairs and then kind of, like, looking at that person. Like I said, the, it was like a POV shot and it felt kind of predatory. So like that's what I'm trying to say. Like it, it evokes those types of emotions out of you, man, just by switching up on those camera angles, which is very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I, am, I will give away, I'm going to give away one scene and one quote that really caught my attention that I thought was badass, man. So there's one scene uh, where the killer has a victim. I'm not going to say what gender, what occupation or anything. That's what you got to watch. But there's one scene where the killer has his victim slices their throat and then fucking like goes underneath and starts fucking bathing in blood and shit like that. And this is fucking phenomenal, man. It is a fucking great scene. And then turns around and thanks the victim for a selfless act. A very kind and selfless act. Nobody has ever done that to him. That type of shit is what you're getting into with this fucking film, man. It is crazy. It's not overly gory. Like, I I don't know which film I would actually compare it to, but it's not like real overly gory. But the effects were done with fucking precision, man, with fucking love. Believe it or not. So yeah, man. I mean, just that scene alone. If you kind of got the drift of what I was saying, if you kind of picture it, that fucking scene alone should tell you. You know what, man? As soon as the motherfucker comes out, I'm buying this. You know. Hopefully, hopefully, because that was my intention with that. Um, yeah, good, good camera angles, the shots, different shots, and the one, uh, the one quote. I'm gonna try, try to read off because I tried to memorize it, but being that I'm a little bit nervous still, I might forget it. So I'm not. I don't want to butcher it. I don't want to butcher it. So the quote is. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what happens or why he said it, but it goes. It's the, the. I'm not even gonna say who said it, but it's like. Well, you probably catch the drift when I say it. Sorry for blabbering. I'm just fucking excited to do this shit, man. It's fun. Um, so it says, uh, what? This is art. Art isn't just supposed to be aesthetically pleasing. It's just, to make, it's just supposed to make you feel some sort of way. Everybody's a critic. Fuck the critics. What do they know? And then, boom, fucking double birds at the camera. 
that fucking quote is fucking phenomenal. I butchered it, I know, sorry. When you watch it and you hear it, you'll be like, fuck, dude, that's fucking badass, man. That is badass. So, um, all in all, man, like I said, I highly, highly recommend this film. More than just a review, this is a high recommendation. Completely unbiased. I love the film, man. I can't wait for it to come out and purchase it and own a physical copy of it, man. Hopefully fucking signed by, by Mr. Todd Sheets. Todd Sheets, if you could do me the favor, when I buy it, when I buy it, because you always have to support fucking independent horror, man. When I buy it, please make sure it is signed by your gracious name. Fucking just all over that motherfucker. And if you feel so inclined to, go ahead and give it a mushroom stamp. But just make sure it's on the cover art, not on the plastic, so, you know, I won't touch it and it's going to feel weird. I'll be like, yeah, it's just, it's sealed on the art, artwork itself. Yeah. No, man. <laughs> Bullshit aside. Um... On a rating system between 1 to 10, I'm going to go ahead. I, I really don't do rating systems. I just kind of give you my thoughts and shit. But on this one, I think I feel I have to. I'm going to give it an 8, man. A high 8. High 8. Like the format or like the other film. that I, His short film he did on high 8. Horror Independent 8. Remember that fucking review? Damn, that's fucking gangster, right? Nah. Nah, man. I got to give it a high 8, man. It is, it is a great film. It was a great film. I had a lot of fucking fun with it. Like I said, I can't speak on it enough as far as the dialogue, the uh, the camera work, everything, man. Everything was just, it fucking blew me away. This is nothing like any other film that I've seen from him. I haven't seen too many of his, of his films. So far, as of now, I've seen um, Bone Hill Road, <clears throat> uh, Dreamy Purple Neon, and um, Clownado. Uh, my apologies. And now this one. And each film has a different feel. Each film has a different feel. And this one, it feels like he actually went... A little bit beyond like I said he, like he really wanted to get things as perfect as possible and I felt that I, I really did get that out of this man like I said being completely unbiased you could tell his passion for it um, the other thing that I really enjoyed man were his uh, he had one of the guys one of the characters had like a wild eye t-shirt that was pretty badass uh, Douglas Epps was actually the uh, the host the host for the radio show and he did a fucking phenomenal job he did a phenomenal job, man. My respects to Douglas Epps, man. Huge shout out. So, yeah, that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it because I enjoyed watching it, reviewing it. Mr. Todd Sheets, I hope you enjoy this review, and I hope it did justice to your film, man. You're, you're a fucking amazing director. As of right now, everything that I've seen from you, I don't think there's anything that I've disliked as of yet. So, man, continue doing what you do, Mr. Sheets. As far as the horror community and those of us who really do love and enjoy independent horror, keep it coming, man. We fucking love it, man. We fucking love it. I love it. I love it for sure. So you keep doing what you do, Mr. Sheets, and um, hopefully we'll continue to work with each other, man. Salute.